Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to talk to you guys about the WWE return to touring that's set to kick off this summer on July 16th for WWE SmackDown and run all the way through the summer until Labor Day for WWE Monday Night Raw. Going on out there world it's your boy tommy on the spot for watch along wrestling hopefully you guys are doing well and staying safe real excited to be here with you guys today if you can't tell i am pumped up this video is 17 months in the making i've been envisioning this video for so long at this point hoping that we'd once again be able to get to a time where we'd all be able to get together and go see some live wrestling at the end of the day, that's what this channel's all about, right? It's all about the live wrestling experience. You can go track my 2019 where I went to about 20 to 30 different shows right here on this channel. And it's something I'm just, I'm passionate about. I love going to go check out live wrestling. And we're finally going to get a chance to do so again with the 25 City Tour that WWE announced on May the 21st. They're going to be starting that off on July the 16th from the Toyota Center in Houston, Texas and running all the way through the summer until Labor Day. At least that's what's been announced thus far. And there's some thoughts as to why that is. Uh, first and foremost, I do not anticipate that. I know that John Alba, who's a really reputable guy, uh, has come out and said that his thought is that maybe, and this is just, his, just him thinking, maybe WWE, once the 25 City Tour is all said and done, they'll go back to doing a little bit of the Thunderdome. And really, September would probably be the time to do it. That's where there is a little bit of a lull. If they ever wanted to do kind of like seasons of WWE, take little breaks. And I know WWE itself is very big on the Thunderdome, uh, but I don't anticipate that's where they go. I think that instead they're promoting this to be a 25 city tour for a couple of reasons. Number one, let's see where we're at, right? Let's see where we're at at the end of the summer here. Everyone's talking about how great things are during the summer and many people are vaccinated. So there is a light at the end of the tunnel, but let's not forget that beginning of the summer last year, things were looking up and then we had another wave. So maybe that, that could be part of it. I think that does play into it. See where everything's at at the end of the summer. Hopefully, knock on wood, everything is fine and we can just keep on going from there. And I think they would just then announce the the, the fall tour, the the, uh, the winter tour, so to speak, uh, that would probably go from Labor Day Raw until the day after Christmas, which is a huge time for WWE. That could be where I think they're going to go. And I think this is going to be kind of like many bands or music acts. Music acts very many times will come on and do a tour throughout the summer. And then once that tour is over, they're picking up and they're moving along right through the winter for a worldwide tour or something to that extent. So I think this is just WWE's way of getting back onto the idea of touring. I think also you make it a limited event. I think people will go out of their way to go and see these shows. I know for me, I was hoping, I was looking and waiting and seeing if maybe they'd announce some shows here in the Northeast. They really haven't announced anything even remotely close to that. So this is going to make it kind of a destination to go out and try to see a show if I'm going to try to do that. And I, I do plan to. I hope I'll be able to get to a show. Um, that being said... I think that's another reason why it is. This feels like a limited time deal. I'm sure there'll be shirts for the return tour, whatever it will be. WWE's marketing genius when it comes to that. I'm sure there'll be plenty of things there. Uh, but before we get into it, let's just talk about how awesome it is that live shows are back. Uh, without even WWE, if you talk about AEW, those shows that were last week before Double or Nothing weekend with AEW Dynamite late night on Friday night into the shows there for Double or Nothing, people were amped, man. Wrestling fans were super stoked. So all the local Florida guys out there, the guys who are at every single NXT show, were there supporting AEW, screaming along to the lyrics of Judas, pumped up to see Jungle Boy win the, uh, the, the Battle Royal there. It was just so refreshing to see. And I think for me, I really enjoyed seeing WrestleMania, right? I didn't go to WrestleMania, and I regret not going because it was a lot of fun. It really looked like a really fun show. But just seeing how many people were so happy to be back there and how happy the talent was, that moment with Bianca Belair where she's choked up in the ring, for me, it rejuvenated some of my love of pro wrestling in a way. Don't get me wrong, I haven't stopped watching wrestling. I still try to watch the pay-per-views from time to time, though Peacock has not made that easy. But for the most part, I mean, I do still follow along. I definitely watch a lot of old school stuff. Uh, but for me, the, 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 the stuff without the crowds has just been really tough to get into. If you think about some of your all-time favorite moments in wrestling, they're your favorite moments because of the crowd. Mick Foley winning the world title for the first time. The crowd going ballistic over it. Shane McMahon, one of my favorite moments. Shane McMahon, I know it's probably not yours, but Shane McMahon coming back in 2016 and Detroit losing their mind for him. An incredible moment there. Even when Brock Lesnar beats The Undertaker and ends the streak, the crowd's not happy, but that's a surreal moment to witness that crowd and the way they respond and crazy Undertaker fans, so to speak, with his eyes popping out of his head. I mean, there's really a lot that goes into many moments that are made so much special, so much more special because of a live crowd. And for me, I'm really excited just to be able to watch these shows again. I mean, for me, 
When I watched WrestleMania after WrestleMania and then went back to the Thunderdome, it's felt a little strange going back to the Thunderdome. I don't want the Thunderdome anymore. I'm, I'm over it. It was a cool idea for its time. It was certainly better than when they were in the, uh, the Performance Center, but I'm ready to move on. Um, I found myself many times, and I love wrestling, and I mean, my wife had our first child in the middle of the pandemic and literally had nothing to do, and I found myself searching through the entire catalog of Netflix looking for a show to watch, or maybe an old Sandler movie, or something, you know, just to keep myself entertained while Raw was on. And that's, to me, a strange deal. So I'm looking forward to this because it's going to allow me to get back into watching these shows, going to feel like these shows are important. I felt like a certain amount of these shows that before the pandemic era, during the pandemic era, rather, we're almost just, hey, we have to perform. We have to provide some sort of entertainment. So let's get out there. Let's do it. But you almost felt like nothing completely crazy was going to happen until live crowds are back. And now live crowds are back. So let me break it down for you guys here. I'm going to give you guys the full tour dates. If you guys have not heard about this, it does start off at with the aforementioned July 16th SmackDown Toyota Center in Houston, Texas. So Texas is going to be popping. And ah, it makes a lot of sense. Texas and Florida, those have been your two states that have had some of the more relaxed COVID protocols. So you know they'll be ready to go there. Uh, that's gonna be a fun, fun show. July 18th, Money in the Bank. They moved Money in the Bank because of how much more the show is kind of amplified with a live crowd. So that'll be cool. That's over in the Dickies Arena, Fort Worth, Texas. And then Monday night, July 19th, Raw at the American Airlines Center in Dallas, Texas. Then after they announced those first three shows, they came back with three additional dates. July 23rd, SmackDown at the Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse in Cleveland, Ohio followed by the July 26th episode of Monday Night Raw from the T-Mobile Center in Kansas City, Missouri, and then the July 30th episode of SmackDown held in the Target Center in Minneapolis, Minnesota. So already uh, three additional cities that can look forward to some WWE. But then I started looking at this and I was thinking 25 cities, there was only 18 TV tapings, including the two pay-per-views. So I figured, was this the return of house shows? Were they gonna do special events? Kind of, sorta, they're doing some super shows. So you get a little Raw and SmackDown. Saturday, July 24th at the PFG or PPG Paints Arena in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Sunday, July 25th, Super Show at the KFC Yum Center in Louisville, Kentucky. Great name. Then Saturday, July 31st, a Super Show at the Fizzery Forum in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Followed by Sunday, August 1st, Super Show in the Little Caesars Arena in the aforementioned Detroit. From there, Monday, August 2nd, Raw at the Allstate Arena in Chicago, one of the best cities for wrestling in the whole world. So at least Chicago gets it. They always say LA, New York, and Chicago. Good to see Chicago gets a little love there. That'll be a lot of fun. From there, Friday, August 6th, SmackDown from the Amelie Arena in Tampa, Florida. Tampa, getting some more wrestling. You thought you, thought you were down there local in Tampa. WrestleMania was it for you. You're getting some more WWE coming right up here on August 6th. August 7th, another super show from the Heinz Arena in Fort Myers, Florida. Sunday, August 8th, at the super, another Super Show, Stephen O'Connell Center in Gainesville, Florida. Monday, August 9th, from the Amway Arena in Orlando, Florida. So this could very well be the 25 cities. They should have named it the 25 cities of Florida, because it just banged out four there. Friday, August 13th, SmackDown is going to be from the Bach Center, or the BOK Center, over in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Saturday, August 14th, Super Show in the Spectrum Center in Charlotte, North Carolina. Woo! Then from there, you've got Sunday, August 15th, Super Show, Col Colonial Life Arena in Columbia, South Carolina. Monday, August 16th, Raw at the AT&T Center in San Antonio, Texas. A little HB shizzle territory there. Friday, August 20th, SmackDown from the Phoenix Suns Arena in Phoenix. Great place to see a show. People in Arizona are awesome. Went there for Royal Rumble 2019, so glad to see Phoenix getting some shows there. Shout out to my boy, Ron. Then we got Saturday, August 21st. Here we go. A SummerSlam announced, but no venue has been officially announced. I know there's some rumors out there. We're going to be with you guys on Saturday, the second this drops. They're going to announce this live before the Belmont Stakes. I'm going to be tuning into that, and then I'll jump on here with you guys when the official announcement's made. I'm excited about this, though. I'm hoping that uh, we get this here at MetLife Stadium. Wouldn't make any sense for the travel, but it is one of the places that's been rumored, and uh, I love it. This would be great if SummerSlam was in MetLife, though I think it's highly unlikely. The night after SummerSlam, Sunday... Uh, oh, sorry. Yes, yes. So Sunday, August 22nd, Super Show. Remember, Saturday is a SummerSlam on a Saturday this year. Sunday, August 22nd, Super Show at the Bale Arena in Denver, Colorado. That'll be cool. And then the Monday, August 23rd, Raw from the... Pekka Chanza, what the, what, Pechanga, I don't even know how to say it, Arena in San Diego, California. 
Friday, August 27th, SmackDown from the Simmons Bank Arena in North Little Rock, Arkansas. Arkansas. My gosh, what's going on? Uh, Monday, August 30th, Raw, Chesapeake Energy Center in Oklahoma City. Friday, September 3rd, SmackDown, Star Veterans Memorial Arena in Jacksonville, Florida. Florida getting three more shows here as they will end things up, or two more shows, rather. They will end things with Monday, Labor Day Raw, September the 6th, from the American Airlines Arena in Miami. Uh, that, to me, is 24. If I missed something, let me know, but I think that's 24 dates. So there might be one extra date that they throw out there. Maybe they'll squeeze another pay-per-view in there. Uh, be cool to see Evolution 2. Wouldn't that be awesome? But uh, I don't know. But in any event, that is the tour. So WWE coming back. Which city are you looking most forward to? Where are you going to check out your live WWE? Let me know in the comment section below. And we'll keep our fingers crossed for, for SummerSlam here at MetLife Stadium. I know a lot of folks probably don't want that. But for me, it'd be great. It'd be awesome. But it doesn't seem to make the most amount of sense if you consider they're in Phoenix, Arizona the night before and over in Denver, Colorado the night after. So it'd be quite inconvenient to travel back across the United States just for, for SummerSlam. But hey. I, I, I'd be all for it. I'd be, be love to see SummerSlam here in my backyard here uh, in the New York, New Jersey area. So in any event, that is going to do it for me in this video. But I am super stoked. Great to see wrestling back. And uh, it's great to see fans being able to go out and do what they can. I loved, loved seeing all the people so amped up for all things AEW over the weekend. And uh, still got another month and a half. But WWE is not far behind from having the WWE Universe return once again. Until next time, everybody, this has been Tommy on the Spot. See you guys in the next video.